and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. My subject is the Bible, so plain that a fool can't miss it. The Bible, so plain that a fool can't miss it. What is the biblical definition of a fool? The word appears primarily in wisdom literature, a person described by general lack of wisdom. Indeed, wisdom is beyond their grasp. In another nu nuance, a uh, fool is morally undesirable individual who despises wisdom and discipline. Uh, is he mocked guilt, is quarrelsome, is licentious, trying to give him instruction is futile. In other words, leave a fool alone. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Psalms 14 and 1, the fool has said in his heart that there is what? No God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none who does good. God indictment against humanity begins by referring to the most wicked among sinners, the fool, Nabal. One of the three Hebrew words for fool in the Old Testament. This is the strongest. This is the person who has descended into the depths of depravity, one who is morally reprehensible and completely unconcerned about others. Being totally devoid of conscience, it doesn't mean that he don't have a conscience. It means that he doesn't listen to his conscience. Uh, the wicked individual preys on others. Notice how the fool is described. Number one, he denies the existence of God because he says in his heart, what? That there is no God. Fools ignore the fact that there is a God and that they are accountable to him. Uh, and, and in their hearts, they deny the reality of God. They make a deliberate decision not to accept God's revealed truth, even though God has placed knowledge of himself within the heart of every individual. Every individual, God has put himself into that individual. And we either need to choose to uh, listen to it or not to listen to it. Uh, Second Peter, uh, the third chapter, uh, beginning at uh, verse uh, number five. 2 Peter, the third chapter, uh, beginning at verse number five. Uh, let, let me begin a little bit uh, uh, higher than that, beginning at verse number three. Knowing this first, that the scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this, for this they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens uh, of old and the earth standing out of water and in water, by which the world then existence. You know what they're saying? They're saying, you saying there's going to be a resurrection. You saying there's going to be a judgment. But you know what? Things are just going on the same way they always have. Well, the Bible says he's going to come as a thief of the night. Things are going to go on as they always have when he comes. And, 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 and you know what? It's going to be a sad day for a lot of people. You see, they deny his existence. But scripture teaches that God has revealed three truths about himself to every person's heart. One, the truth of his existence. Romans 19, uh, Romans 1, 19 through 22. The truth of his judgments. Romans 1, 32. The truth of his moral law as summarized 
by the Ten Commandments, Romans 2, 14 through 15. We have an example in Cornelius, who wasn't a Jew, but God had placed himself in Cornelius that Cornelius was a better, uh, a better Jew than, than, he was a better Jew even though he was a Gentile than some Jews. So much so that God sent Peter to go tell him what to do. Fools reject God's revelation to them and live as if God don't exist. They break God's moral laws without fear of God's judgment, never considering the fact that they are going to be held accountable for their conduct. And let me tell you something. Paul said ignorance is no excuse. You see, uh, he is totally corrupt. Uh, you remember God's words in uh, Genesis 6, uh, about the fifth chapter. God said that he was sorry that he made man. You know, man must have been really bad for God to get to the point where it grieved him that he had made man. He said that, uh, he said that uh, 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 the, law, the Lord saw that wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Thank God for Noah. Thank God he followed them instructions on how to make that ark. Am I right about it? You see, he didn't do what he wanted to do. Man is, 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 is totally corrupt. The fool is totally corrupt. You see, uh, the word is Nabal. There was a man in the Bible, his, his name was actually Nabal. Uh, uh, and and, and, and he, I guess his parents knew he was going to be a fool when he grew up. Uh, 1 Samuel 25. Am I right about it? You know, sometimes we name our kids and they turn, am I right about it? They turn out like that. Am I right about it? They named that boy Nabal. They know what that word meant. Fool. You see, he was a man who truly lived up to his name. Amen. In every way, he was an example of a person who denies and defies God. Take a look, take a close look at, the char at his character and his action. He was crude and harsh. He was evil and mean in all his dealings. He was ungrateful. He was uncaring. He was selfish. He was called a son of Belial, a worthless, wickless scoundrel. He was unapproachable and unreasonable. And after a night of partying, God struck him down. He was in a coma 10 days, and he died. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be called a fool when I stand before God. You see Proverbs 16 and 22. Understanding is a wellspring of life to him who has it, but the correction of a fool is folly. Some people you can, you can correct and they'll understand. But then you have fools. Amen. So you know what? I, I've learned something. I, I took some medicine one time and I was in a coma three days. And I woke up and I just, you know, and, and you know folks say when they, when, you know, when you have a near-death experience, you see a bright light. I didn't see nothing. I saw absolutely nothing until I woke up. And, and you know, I wonder about folk who say that. And they always see, they always see heaven. Nobody has ever come back and said, I saw hell, don't go there. I, 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 I'm not trying to mess. I'm just, I'm, the, I'm just trying, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to tell you the truth. See, 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 fools. In this text, is not some some dummy. Fools are somebody who refuse to do what God says to do, and that makes you a fool. In Jeremiah 21 and 8, 
when the uh, Nebuchadnezzar's army was coming to Jerusalem and uh, uh, King Zedekiah called Jeremiah, uh, Brother David, and he said, I want you to tell me the truth. And old Jeremiah said, I don't know about that because I, I may not get out of here alive. He said, no, 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 no. I, I really want you to tell me the truth. And Jeremiah was like, I, I, I don't know. Y'all done tried to kill me several times. And, 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 and I don't know if I, he said, no, don't tell me everything and don't hold nothing back. And Jeremiah said, this is what you need to do. He says, if you fight, you're going to die. He says, but if you surrender, you'll live. He says, behold, I put before you the way of life and death. You must make a choice. The foolish people chose the fight. The ones who were wise surrendered. God has always put before us a way of life and death. And you see, this is what's going on in Isaiah 35 and 8. One of the most glorious passages in all of God's words in these verses. The glory of this passage is enhanced, if that is possible, by the setting of of the oasis between the visionary waste of Isaiah 34 and the history of war and sickness, Isaiah 35, 36, 5 through 9. So in between these two bad things, God showed them an oasis. He showed them a way. He showed them a road. He showed them the way of holiness. And he said, you must make a choice. Even so, what it's saying is that the fool will see it. The fool will see it. But he's just going to say what? No. Jeremiah 6 and 16. God said there was a path. But he said take the old path. The way of righteousness. Brother Williams what did they say? We will not walk therein. They were fools. The path was put there for them to go the right way. They were fools. That's like you driving on the freeway and everybody going against you. <laughs> you took the wrong path. And if you don't turn around, you a fool. You see, attention has often been given to the numerous parallels between Isaiah 35 and those found in Isaiah 40 through 66. The themes shared in common include the transformation of the desert into a lush oasis at the appearance of God which appear, uh, appears also in Isaiah 41, 17 through 21, 43, 19 through 21. The coming of God as a source of comfort and strength Found also in Isaiah 40, 9 and 11, 52, 7 and 10. Three, the restoration of the health of the weak and infirm. Appearing again in Isaiah 42, 16. Four, the preparation of the desert of a highway for the redeemed predicted again. The joy of the redeemed as they return to Zion mentioned also in Isaiah 43, 5 and 7. What I, it's telling them although you're going into captivity there's going to be a road back for you see you know uh, God said yeah I'm going to punish you but I'm not going to leave you there alone and, and, and I'm going to give you a road I'm going to give you a road back but don't you know that more of those Jews chose to stay where they were did they come home? They got comfortable being among them pagans. And you know that sounds like some of us. We don't want to be around church folk. We want to be around other folk. We we wanna we wanna cut up and let our hair down. Am I right about it? Yeah, I ain't got no hair to let down, so I ain't worried about it. Amen. We, we, we wanna cut up. We wanna look like everybody else. Am I right about it? But you know what? In the end, at the straight gate, 
For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many go into air. For straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And few there be go in there. I'd rather be among the few than the many. Because you know what? The, the, the majority ain't always right. Just look what happened in November 2016. Yes. The Bible is so plain that a fool can't miss it. And what makes him a fool is that, you know, the, the Bible is plain. It's simple. See, we, we, we got brethren. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all. We got some brethren who have gone to theological cemeteries. They want to come back and change God's word. They want to roll the piano up in here. They want to roll the drums up in here. They want to have the choir up in here. They, 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 they want to dance up in here. If you got to dance, dance at home. Most of us can't dance no way. But we want to dance in God's house. You see, you see, we need to understand. We need to understand. This passage is not referring to any kind of elevated roadway through a desert, but the way of salvation in Jesus Christ. He alone is the way. Some of the language here has long been misunderstood. Wayfaring man, though a fool, shall not err therein, has been thought to, to, to mean that even a fool can enter the way. That's not with, uh, that without making an error. But what is meant is fools are not permitted to enter it. The word fool here carries a moral rather than the intellectual significance. Here it stands for the irreligious and they shall not go to and from in the way of holiness. And it's not that they can't see it. It's not that it's not presented to them. They study the same Bible that we study. But they just come, you know what? I ain't worried about God. I'm going to do what I want. And then when they stand before an angry God. You, 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 know, you know what that word, angry, in the Greek, you, you, you brothers. Y'all hang with me now. Have your wife, have you ever seen her nostrils flare? Orge? When that happened, I'm going to tell you what to do. Just back out the room slowly. Don't turn your back. Back out. Go take a walk, take a drive, come back, and peek in there and see if that nose is all right. That's what it means. It means your nostrils to flare. When I stand before God, I, I don't want his nostrils to be flaring at me. I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been keeper of a few things. I'll make you rule over many. Come in and enter with me. See, it's the way of holiness which is described here. It is the way to eternal life. First, one must come to that way. No man has ever entered that way without first getting to it first how does one arrive at it faith brings one to it not into it it brings us to it but not into it confession also brings one to it repentance brings one to it then one must enter the way how does one enter a Christ the word reveals the answer Romans 6 3 through 5 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, Galatians 3 and 27, all of these scriptures talk about being baptized into Christ. That's what a road leads to. Baptism, baptized into Christ. How many times have you talked to people and they say, well, I'm all right, preacher. My pastor, she told me I don't need to be baptized. You messed up already. He 
He just said, I just, I, I, I just, he said, I just started 10 minutes ago. That's what they say. <laughs> My honey, these glasses are not working. I'm going to have to take them back to the doctor. You see, you see, you see, uh, then one must continue in the way, all the way home. Revelations 2 and 10. But be thou faithful unto death. You see, James 2, 21 uh, through 22, Peter, 2 Peter 1, 6 through 8. The highway of salvation is a simple way. The wayfaring man, yea, fools, shall not err therein. The difficulties we make, they are not really in the way. The way of salvation seems to wise people full of mystery, yet it is grasped by the wayfaring the fool, the child, none need miss the way, for it is thoroughly well fitted with directions and guideposts. God has told us and shown us how to get there through his word. We have those brothers who have gone through to the, I, I don't call them seminaries, I call them cemeteries because they're killing folk. Saying that the Bible is not true. Where I read, God's word is pure. Am I right about it? If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Set you free from what? Them cemeteries. Don't follow a man or a woman to hell. And matter of fact, if you got a pastor and she a woman... Ask her, is she the husband of one wife? I know what's going on in the world, but if two women get married, they still two women. And even if they hate a man, if they want a child, the man got to get involved. Two men can get married, and they might hate women. But if they want a child, a woman got to get involved in some kind of way. Am I right about it? God knew what he was doing when he said, make them male and female, and let them be fruitful and multiply. I don't know about you, but I don't want to wake up next to nobody that got a beard. Amen. You see, man don't know the way. Proverbs 14 and 12. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. You see, wise people prepare for life's end by choosing the right road. You hear me? The path that ends in life, not death. Fools mock sin and carelessly plunge head first into sin, sinful pleasure of this world or of their own selfish uh, ways. They have no regard for God, no regard for eternity, no regard for the path they are traveling. Their godless lives end in death, both physical death and spiritual death. However, an entirely different category of people travel on the road they sincerely believe is right, but they are tragically mistaken. They travel the way of Muhammad, the way of Buddha, the way of Confucius, the way of the Dalai Lama, of Joseph Smith. You know Mormons? Amen. You know Mormons? They wouldn't even let black folk into the Mormon church until the late 70s. Why would I, why would I uh, and they still won't let us be elders or priests there. Why am I going to go somewhere and be a second class citizen? Amen. I, I, I'm just telling you the truth. The, the, the way of Charles Taze Russell, Jehovah Witnesses. What are they witnessing that we haven't witnessed? Matter of fact, if you want to talk about a Jehovah Witness, I'm going to tell you who a Jehovah Witness was. When God told him to stand still and watch what I do for you today, and he parted the Red Sea, that's Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses, God fed them for 40 years. They closed and wear out, and they didn't even have to fight a battle. He gave them water for 2 million plus people on a daily basis, plus the animals. That was, Je they were Jehovah Witnesses. Amen. The way of T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen. Ricky Rush, you know that, you know, I'll, I'll pass. Why don't you come up here? <laughs> Thought you was my friend. 
What kind of watch you got? Passed by Ibar. Y'all to see Ibar. Big old building. Tell me they got ATMs in there in case you forget to bring your offering. Man got a, a brother, brother Judge, man got a, he got a, he got a street named after him. Jesus don't even have that. But he got Ricky Rush uh, uh, Avenue named after him. Let him stay on Ricky Rush Avenue. That's the way of ooh. You see, Ruble Shelley, Max Licato, Paul Day, Rodney Doolin, J.K. Hamilton, Jefferson Carruthers, Ricky Burf, and all the rest of you, uh, J.D., uh, whatever your name is. And the rest of y'all, you on the way to hell if you don't straighten yourself up. I had somebody who was supposed to be a minister in the Lord's church ask me, what is a public sin? Thank God I'm a Christian. I could have used some language, Lord have mercy Please. But I didn't. I said, if I need to answer that, you need to go back to new convert class. Amen. Many people travel these roads and multitude of other roads and com with complete confidence that these paths lead to everlasting life. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. We got to stop following man and follow God. The Bible says in Matthew 15, beginning at verse number 12, Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father have not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the ditch. If I'm going to go to hell, I'm going to go to hell on my own. I ain't going to follow you. I'm going to do it all on my own. I ain't going to stand. You know, you know, when I was a kid, uh, the worst thing, if I, if I did something wrong, if I did something wrong, Brother Williams, and, and, and I went home and my dad said, why did you do it? The worst thing I could say is because everybody else did it. So, boy, you don't have enough sense. To get in trouble your own by yourself. If every, then, then, then he say, uh, if, 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 if everybody was on the railroad tracks, would you stand on the railroad tracks? Train was coming? No. Would you jump off the Golden Gate Bridge? Well, you know, you like coming up here. How much time I got? Two minutes. All right. We can work that out. Now, don't come back up here. If the blind lead the blind, would you let? Now, I'm just asking. I'm just asking a question. Would you let Stevie Wonder drive you anywhere? Would you? You got that kind of sense, right? Then why are you following a blind leader? You see, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, who minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. The devil blinds us. He'll blind you in a minute. And you know what? Then he'll go tell on us. Look at what, look, look, look at what they're doing. You know what? In my neighborhood, the worst thing you could be is a snitch. The devil wouldn't make it in my neighborhood. Amen. Romans 1, 20 and 25. For since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because they, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were, they, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, in their foolish hearts 
were darkened, professing to be wise, they became fools uh, 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 and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made into the corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. Even a fool can find the road, but he refuses to walk there. God bless you. Amen.